China is the most populated nation on Earth and home to a booming organ transplant industry. However, over the past decade, reports have emerged that the majority of organs are not sourced from death row prisoners and donations, as stated by officials, but rather from innocent prisoners of conscience murdered on demand. Researchers across the globe are uncovering new evidence that shows the true nature and scale of these abuses. In June 2016, three independent investigators jointly published a 680-page report of irrefutable evidence. China, to my knowledge, is the only country in the world where the government-run industrial program kills people and sells their organs. Endless hospitals in here, we go into them in great detail. We're talking about a very large uh, hospital, endless amounts of uh, transplant surgeons and uh, transplant teams. I was really surprised how high the number was. I mean, it's, it, as I say, it's multiplied uh, between 6 and 10 of the official figures. Hearings were held by the U.S. Congress, the British Parliament, the European Parliament, and the Canadian Parliament. The U.S. House of Representatives unanimously passed a resolution condemning the systematic state-sanctioned organ harvesting from non-consenting prisoners of conscience. China's killing for organs is making a major appearance across media outlets all over the world. Discovering exactly how large the transplant industry is in China and how many victims there have been is difficult. The researchers spent a decade piecing together the evidence. For example, in September 2013, director Zhu Jie of the Liver Transplant Center at the People's Hospital of Peking University told China Economic Weekly, our hospital conducted 4,000 liver and kidney transplants within a particular year. So we had to cross-check everything. Uh, so when we had posted volume numbers, we cross-checked it against staff, against beds, against research publications, against uh, media reports, the, against the purchase of Im immunosuppressive drugs. I mean, every which way we could. And what we were able to do by all this cross-checking is develop a consistent picture. And, and in that particular case, we came to the conclusion that yes, this claim of 4,000 was real. Tianjin Central Hospital, they have 500 beds. It's actually over that now. 500 dedicated transplant beds. Now, they were claiming in their internal communications at, at several points to be doing 131% occupancy. What that means, again, 20 to 30 day stay, or what it suggests is they're doing about 5,000 transplants per year. These examples show that China's official claim of 10,000 transplants per year is easily surpassed by just a few hospitals. But these two hospitals are just the tip of the iceberg. The investigators found that more than 1,000 transplant hospitals applied for permits from the Ministry of Health in 2007 to continue doing transplants. That suggests these hospitals met the ministry's minimum capacity requirement for transplant centers it certifies. 169 were eventually selected. If you assume hospitals just operating at the minimums, never mind actual, our actual estimate is closer to 100,000 a year. Organ transplantation has been continuously incorporated into the national five-year plan and has become a high priority in China's national strategy a large number of organ transplant research and training projects are funded under the major national programs and funds. The investigators found that China International Transplantation Network Assistance Center, SITNAC, listed transplant prices for foreigners on its archived website. It was bringing in about nine or ten billion dollars a year, this, uh, this industrial uh, transplant operation going on across China now. It's a lot of money, a lot of, uh, a lot of hospitals are financing a lot of their activities through that. SITNAC website stated, 
we need to give all of the thanks to the government for the support extended for our completing such a large number of organ transplants every year. This is a one of a kind in the world. Researchers were particularly struck by one aspect of these transplants. Unlike anywhere else in the world, they were being done on demand. The 2006 Liver Transplant Registry report showed that 27% of samples were emergency transplants. That means they found a new liver within days or even hours. It was back in 2005 when a patient of mine who has been on the top list of patients for human heart transplantation came to me one day and told me that he was told by his insurance company, his Israeli insurance company, to go to China in two weeks' time as he was scheduled to undergo heart transplantation. And when I asked him how come such a surgery can be scheduled ahead of time, you know, somebody has to die on the very day of the operation, he said he didn't know and he went to China and got his heart transplantation exactly on the day that he was promised. One hospital in southwest China claimed to have donors seeking matched recipients and also promised, in case of failure, we will continue to perform transplants until one is successful. In 2006, a chief surgeon of the Organ Transplant Center at a traditional Chinese medicine hospital published a study of 50 patients at his hospital who had each received kidney transplants two, three, or four times. Another example that uh, I can't get out of my head is a man from a country who went twice to China. First time he went, uh, they brought him four sets of, ki of kidneys, and none of the four was compatible with him. Three months, four months later, he came back, and they gave him, brought him four more sets of kidneys, until finally the eighth kidney worked, and uh, when we saw him, he was doing fine, but... Uh, Eight human beings uh, have been killed. In northeastern China, the International Transplantation Network Assistance Center stated on its website, China carries out kidney transplants from living sources. It's completely different from cadaveric kidney transplants in Japan. Because they have a bank of live donors waiting to get a match on the computer. Some like, like some horrible restaurant where you go in and see a lobster and say, I want that lobster and the lobster's killed. It's a crime against humanity. The Chinese government claimed that the vast majority of organs came from death row prisoners and later donations. However, international organizations estimate that the number of death row executions at thousands each year since 2000 and decreasing. Chinese tradition requires that bodies remain whole after death. There was no organ donation system in China before 2010. Even today, there are very few donations. Therefore, these two sources combined account for only a tiny fraction of all transplants performed in China. China started performing transplants with organs harvested from executed prisoners at a small scale in the 70s. In the years that follow, it also started using organs from prisoners of conscience. In 1999, the crackdown of Falun Gong uh, starts. That is the largest action of scale uh, of the, uh, by the Chinese Communist Party since the Cultural Revolution. And by 2000, 2001, that's when you have this explosion of transplant activity. We see continuity in the numbers over time. The Falun Gong is a, as I call it, it's kind of a Buddhist revival group. It doesn't have churches and so forth, doesn't have temples. Uh, what it has is sort of common beliefs. These shared beliefs revolve around self-improvement based on the values of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. By the end of the 1990s, the Chinese government estimated that over 70 million of its citizens were practicing Falun Gong. Jiang Zemin, the head of the Communist Party at the time, 
saw Falun Gong's popularity and revival of traditional values as a threat to his rule, and launched a violent campaign to eradicate it in July 1999. Hundreds of thousands of Falun Gong practitioners from all over China traveled to Beijing to appeal to the central government, only to be arrested and tortured. When many refused to disclose their identities to protect their families and friends, they became part of a large, anonymous population held captive by the state. More practitioners were rounded up all across China. This is when large numbers of them started disappearing without a trace. The official line uh, in terms of repression of Falun Gong of the party is bankrupt them uh, financially, ruin their reputations, destroy them physically. So that uh, the vilification is destroying their reputations, the organ transplants is uh, destroying them physically. There's the physical examinations, the, the blood uh, testing, the organ examination, which have no other explanation than suitability for a transplant. It was like convert or, or die convert or die, uh, turn in your friends or die, that it's state-sponsored genocide. As we did not expect, after the Holocaust, to see this kind of medical corruption come round again. How can doctors, people trained to heal, harvest organs from living people for transplants? In February 2017, Freedom House, an international human rights watchdog, published its own report on religion in China. It noted that a review of available information regarding organ transplants had found credible evidence suggesting that, beginning in the early 2000s, Falun Gong detainees were killed for their organs on a large scale. Since I've been a student of the Holocaust, uh, I, I feel that to a certain extent, uh, what we're seeing is, is just a continuation of uh, what we uh, saw there in another form, which is the endless and bottomless depravity of human nature. I mean, there's no limit to the uh, form of evil that people can sink. When I was writing The Slaughter, I sometimes said, oh, I'm, I'm writing history, and then at the end of it I realized I, I wasn't. It was actually still going on. This is a new form of genocide and it's using the most respected members of society to implement it. This is one of the central tests of our time. We can't avoid this any longer. <laughs>